everybody. I'm Julie Mulligan, and I'm coming to you live from the studios of 1-800-Flowers.com. And I'm here today to talk about roses because 1-800-Flowers is celebrating roses all month long with their annual rose festival. Now, this is a great time for roses. They are available and beautiful, and 1-800-Flowers is bringing you some fabulous deals. We have lots of varieties and different type of arrangements, but what I want to tell you about first is the deals, okay? You just can't go wrong with a dozen roses. A dozen red roses, traditional, classic, no-brainer, okay? Add another dozen roses to that, you have two dozen roses. I'm not done yet. A free vase and a free rose scented candle. All of that, two dozen roses, a vase and a candle, you're not gonna believe it, $29.99, okay? You can't get a deal like that anywhere. And it's just a beautiful gift to send someone, it's a beautiful gift to send to yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of anyone else? And what I wanna do here today is tell you about the deal. So on this, with the red, it's $24.99. We also have pink roses, for just $5 more, $34.99, you get the same deal. Buy 12, get 12, get a free vase and a free candle. Our deals that we have, that we offer on the roses, we also have kaleidoscope roses to tie-dye for, I might say, and glow-in-the-dark roses, we have lavender roses. Check out the Rose Festival on our website, 1-800-Flowers.com. It's right on the homepage. Click on there and you'll see tons of different offers. What I wanted to show you here is the roses that we're offering the deals on. We have uh, fabulous relationships with the best growers in the world. And we ship flowers directly from these farms to the consumer. We also offer roses and every kind of flower and arrangement through our florist network. So we offer you every option that you could possibly want if you want to send flowers to someone as a gift or to yourself. Now that comes the flowers that come direct from the farm come in a great gift box. It's all been really scientifically designed with compartments for the vase and flower food, a message card. It has all the instructions that the recipient will need to take care of their flowers. And what I like about this is that you can have some fun yourself with the flowers when you receive them. So it's important to know who the recipient is. If I was sending these, sending roses to my mother-in-law, I wouldn't send her, she's, you know, God bless her, she's 92 years old, wonderful woman, and I wouldn't send her the roses in the box that she's going to have to take care of and arrange herself. It would just, you know, not be right for her, but I definitely would send her flowers from the florist network that are hand-designed, hand-delivered, with the message card, and trust me, I've done it many, many times, and it just really makes our day. So you think about who the recipient is and what would be right for that person. Now I wanted to um, show you a little inspiration, um, and that's sort of my role here at 1-800 Flowers. I've been in the flower business for a long time, over 40 years. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, yes, I am over 40. And um, what I like to do on my blog and speaking of my blog, you can go to my blog at 1-800-Flowers.com backslash blog backslash Julie. And everything that I'm going to be talking about here today and showing you, you'll be able to find on my blog in depth. How to care for roses, how to arrange roses, different types of roses. Uh, but I'm just going to touch on them here today because, you know, Facebook Live, we have a little bit of time. Some of you may be sitting down for the first time all day and having your lunch, and I hope you're uh, enjoying this and you know getting a little information and a little entertainment. Um, so we'll just be touching on a lot of things. So with the roses, if you get a dozen, it'll look like this if you put them in the vase that comes with it. The two dozen will look like this. But you have two dozen roses, in my opinion, unless I have a reason to have them all displayed together, I would rather take those two dozen roses and spread them all around the house. Or if you're having perhaps a dinner party or having some guests over and you're setting a beautiful table, 
why not take those same roses and cut them really short and put them in a small vase and you can put a couple of them down the middle of the table you can put candles in between this would be great to put on your bedside table or in the kitchen because well let's play face it flowers make people feel good there have been studies that have been done Rutgers University in New Jersey did a study and um, I believe there are many studies done that prove having fresh cut flowers in your environment elevates your mood so it's an easy legal way to feel better <laughs> so what I want to show you here is um, a way that you can arrange your flowers in your hand to just drop into a short container um, there's taping there's different ways crisscrossing to arrange so I'll just you know show you a few of those here um, you want to start with whether it's a tall vase short vase whatever you want to start with a clean vase because bacteria any kind of dirt in the vase will be in the water will get into the flower will clog the stem block the flow of water and that's when I'm sure everyone has seen roses where the head just like the neck is just drooped over that's because there's a blockage in that stem if that happens take your roses out of the water clean the vase fill it with fresh flour and flower food you'll get flower food with the delivery of uh, flowers and this is very important it really will extend the life of your flowers the vase life so you fill it whatever your vase is about three quarters of the way up Make sure you check the directions. You don't want to put too much in. This would be for a tall vase, so you'll use half of this, a third of this, and that's great. If you're using three smaller vases, you have enough flower food for all three vases. You turn that around, get the branding up there, 1-800-Flowers.com, that's right. So then you take your roses, you lay them out, your vase is ready. I'm not putting water in here now because I'm just demonstrating. You want to make sure that you remove any leaves on your stems that would be below the water level. So you don't want to promote the bacteria. So when you have your roses ready, I already kind of stripped down a few. Take them in your hand, very simply, and just you sort of crisscrossing the stems as you go along, and you just keep putting them in. I'm going with this 24, uh, does, there's 24 stems of roses. I can make three arrangements, eight roses each. I didn't even need a calculator for that. It's because I have a granddaughter in the fourth grade and I help her with her homework, but I have found that uh, I have to Google everything that I have to help her with now because nothing is taught the way it was taught many years ago. So anyway, I'm getting off track. So here I have a little bouquet. You wanna measure and cut the bottom of your stems so that these flowers are just sitting right at the top of the vase. Just give them a fresh cut and now when you place them in and you may have to remove a few more leaves your roses will sit nicely in this vase and these have just arrived uh, to my door and they are going to open up. This one as you can see these roses are a little more open than these already because these have already started hydrating. As soon as you get your flowers in the fresh water, you're going to see them look very different than they did when you opened up the box because they are coming, they're fresh cut from the farm, coming direct to you. So they're going to be tight and they're going to look a little tired. They've just traveled a long way to make you happy. But give them a little time, put them in the water. A couple hours later, you're not going to recognize those flowers because they'll be standing up straighter. The petals will start to open and you'll have a beautiful arrangement. Now, another way that you can arrange roses, because I realize to me it's second nature, I can do this with my eyes closed, but for the regular consumer, you're not at this point arranging flowers every day, maybe you will, you start to get flowers in your life and you realize how great it feels, but here's another trick. To get flowers, like especially a vase that has a wide opening like this. This is uh, from our collection at 1-800-Flowers. It's a really beautiful, trendy vase with a hammered 
gold on the bottom. Metallics, especially gold, is so hot right now. So what I'm going to do so that I don't have to fill this entire vase with flowers, but I can still make a nice arrangement, is to put a little tape grid on the top. I started already putting the lines one way, and now I'm going to put the lines of tape the other way. And I'm gonna just use my mouth because it's a good tool. <laughs> and sometimes I have to shut it. <laughs> but not now, because we're live on Facebook with 1-800-Flowers.com. So now I put a few pieces of tape in the other direction to create the grid. Take a little piece of tape and wrap it around the top, very top of the rim of the vase. And you can cut the extra pieces of uh, tape that are hanging down. And I'm not going to take too much time doing that, but um, that's how you would do it. And you just keep doing it until you have all those pieces of tape uh, off. You can add flower food now and the water now if you didn't do it first. And now you'll see when you take your flowers, your roses, whatever it is, um, and I didn't mention the autumn roses that we have here. This is one of the specialists. This is one of my favorite products in the fall season. Um, you get orange, red, yellow roses. They come with this fabulous uh, glass vase that's um, covered with a wicker vase and you can use that after it has a handle I'm going to use this little stem as my pointer <laughs> it comes with a little handle here let me grab this so you can really see it and it also comes with a tea light so when you're not using it as a vase you can put a tea light in there you can hang it on a branch out in your backyard or put it anywhere in your home and I use these vases all the time at my house. They're very um, versatile. They work with a lot of different, for a lot of different occasions, and um, I highly recommend that product. So what I want to show you here now is when you take your flower and you cut it to the length that you want, remove the leaves, and you put it where you want, it's going to stay in the middle of the vase. It's not going to fall to the outer rim, and it makes it so much easier for you to make an arrangement that will look pretty and you'll be able to do it in no time and you'll think, wow, that's not so hard. Um, how come Julie thinks she's so special that she can make an arrangement? I won't say that, but I won't like it. <laughs> anyway, so this is the idea, just putting a simple grid at the top of the vase and it makes it very easy to arrange. Okay, I have a little off-screen assistant here that I'm going to have to buy lunch for after this for all this hard work. <laughs> uh, another product that I did want to mention here, um, this is a beautiful bouquet. During the day, it looks great. It has that great, fresh, green look to it. Um, I love the way these roses look when the light's on and in the daytime, but uh, we all know what month we're coming into. That's right, my birthday month and also Halloween, which is the day after my birthday. So we're getting all ready for Halloween. It's become such a huge holiday, decorating holiday. Well, these roses actually glow in the dark. It's unbelievable what they're doing with flowers these days. Um, they're making flowers bigger, better, lasting longer, tie dyeing them, and now they're making them glow in the dark. So if you want to uh, surprise somebody, and uh, celebrate Halloween, then I would order the Hour Glow in the Dark Roses. They're really spectacular. You can go onto the website and uh, see, uh, see them and see a better shot of them than this one here, but this gives you the idea that once everything's dark around them, they'll glow in the dark. All right, what else? Did I tell you about all the offers? I think I did. What I wanted to do now is to show you um, a way that this is a very popular DIY that I've done on the blog and we're going to be posting throughout the month throughout the Rose Festival we're going to be reposting a lot of the favorite rose focused posts that I've done in the past and I think one of the most popular ones oh wait one more thing 
with the arranger. Um, if you have a small neck on your vase, I find these are the easiest uh, shapes to design with. Bigger on the bottom, smaller on the top, and it helps you when you're arranging because you're crisscrossing your stems when you put them in to give a nice open shape and a smaller neck and a wider bottom works perfectly with that. So that's if you're choosing a vase and you don't know which one to use, I'd say the smaller the neck, the better. And especially if it has a wider base because you can, they can open up as opposed to going straight up and down. So this little trick I'm going to show you here. Whoa, let me pull this up here a little bit. Got a little handy dandy cart. And I've been doing this for a while, waxing flowers after um, they've reached their prime as a fresh cut flower. And recently I decided to give this Wilton candy melter a try because um, you don't have to do anything with the stove or anything. And what I really like about it is that it has a soft silicone pot that goes in there. So I've already melted the wax. When you're done with your project, you just turn off the candy melter or take this out, let the wax harden again. You can take it out, you can use this for something else. And I now also use soy wax. Um, I used to do paraffin, and paraffin isn't the healthiest of wax, but soy wax is um, totally natural. Uh, there's no problem if you use it in um, something that you also put food in. It doesn't have any odor, and it's very, very safe to work with. And you can buy soy wax in these uh, flakes in large bags so that as your wax is melting, you can just keep adding more. I also just recently bought a small crock pot that I'm going to try. So I, I will be posting in the future with how that worked and a candy thermometer so I can really tell you, because what I tell you now is just get your hands in there, get involved, give it a try. But I'm going to tell you what temperature your wax should be at for each flower that I'm going to recommend that you wax. So I've already waxed the um, melted the wax here, the soy wax, and the time to, oh, let me show you a few other things. This, you'll see what I'm gonna do with that in a second. A piece of styrofoam, some wooden skewers, or you could uh, use a vase, this is after you wax and you have to let them dry. What you wanna do is when your flowers, you've already enjoyed your roses, probably if you're doing some of the things I recommended here today, probably two weeks, and you'll have roses that look like this, or close to this. Because if you cut your roses this short, right from the beginning, they'll last a long time because they're so close to the water source. The water doesn't have to work to get all the way up the stem to where it needs to be the flower. You, you'll be very surprised at how long a full open rose can last when it's in a short container. So as you're recutting your roses and they're getting shorter and now they're at the point where you really don't think they're going to last any longer. Cut off the stem totally. I'm gonna to go close to the bottom of the stem and I'm going to put a wooden skewer. Now remember, this is Facebook Live, so things could go wrong. And if they do, then I just want you to check the post that I did about waxing flowers where I made sure everything went right. But let's give it a try. So I'm going to dip this in, all the way in, and it's a little bit um, shallow right now. I should have added some more wax. And it, no, I don't even know if it's too, it's too hot yet. Um, I think it might be good. So what you need to do is to let as much of the wax drip off as possible. And this is where this, handy dandy thing comes into play. I found that if I, well this is a big flower, but with smaller flowers, and I just kind of twisted it around in here to get the wax off, because you want as little wax as possible left on there to dry, so that it dries as clear as possible. You can always re-dip if you feel that you want to put a little more wax on there, but you want to get as much off, and a lot came out, so that's good. 
I'm going to get as much wax off as possible. And then you put either the skewer in a piece of styrofoam or you can put it in a vase. Just make sure you put some uh, paper, some scrap paper, old newspaper underneath. Let that dry and you're not going to believe it. It's going to look like a fresh rose. You're not going to see the wax and it really will last for months after this. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. And I'm going to uh, blog about after uses, putting them in shadow boxes, putting them on, on top of a book with a ribbon. And it just helps the sentiment that was sent with the flowers to continue on in your heart. Every time you look at that waxed rose, you'll remember when your husband sent you those roses for no reason at all, just because you're so special. So anyway, we're going to wrap up my first Facebook Live for 1-800-Flowers. Today it was all about roses. The next time, who knows? Oh, wait, one more thing I forgot to tell you. We're going to do a sweeps right now. Who's ever listening, just go onto the uh, Facebook page and post who you would like to send roses to. Tell me why. It could be yourself. It could be a surprise person. It could be anything. Just get creative, but you have to put hashtag sweepstakes so that we can choose our winners. We're going to choose three winners and they're going to get a dozen beautiful red roses. And, oh, I, I was wondering, I thought it was raining, but no, someone here is telling me that I have a question. This is my first time here doing this and I'm very excited. Okay. Leticia, what other ways can I make my roses last longer? Okay, you can, well, to last longer, it's really about keeping them hydrated. If you want them fresh, other ways that you can preserve them and, last, and keep them longer than two plus weeks as fresh flowers, you can hang them upside down and let them dry. Just put them in a place where it's, you know, dry and, um, you know, it doesn't get too much moisture and just leave them hanging there for a while. They'll dry out beautifully and then you can do whatever you want with them. After you can make potpourri, you can take your rose petals and maybe set up a little romantic evening in your boudoir. And uh, you know, maybe it's not something you usually do, but you have rose petals laying around, who knows? Go on the site, you can see um, on my blog, winningcountryflowers.com backslash blog backslash Julie. And I've made um, a shirt out of rose petals in the shape of a heart. I've covered uh, pumps, not Louboutin, but high heels with rose petals. Um, put roses in vintage handbags. Really, the sky's the limit. Your imagination is the only thing that's going to stop you. The best place to keep your roses is another question. Uh, if you want your fresh roses to last as long as possible, don't put them directly in the sunlight, even though they may look beautiful on your front windowsill with the sun shining in. If there's a reason you need them there and you want them there, go ahead, but it will shorten the life of them with direct heat. You don't want to put them in, um, you know, in front of a fireplace or an air conditioner. Just room temperature, fresh water, and enjoy. And let's see, which one is my favorite? They all look so pretty, I can't decide. Well, I can't decide either. I really like kids. I have three kids. Are any of them my favorite? Well, I'm not saying. No, none of my favorite. You love them all for different reasons. Um, maybe I'll say free spirit. Um, free spirit roses, I think I was uh, working with them before. They're a uh, bicolor pink orangey rose and it opens up so big and I love the name because I consider myself a free spirit too, even at this old age. But um, yeah, I'd say for right now, I'm going, if I have to pick one, I'll say free spirit. And garden roses, I love garden roses. I just use them in my daughter's wedding. Okay, I think, uh, do I have any more that I have to answer live? Um, how often should I change the water? I would say every three days would be great. Um, if you go four or five, don't, don't say, well, I didn't do it on the third, do it then. And also add water daily because it will drink up water. You want to keep them hydrated. I hope you enjoyed. 
uh, the post today. I know I had fun. And uh, yes, I am from New York. And yes, I have an accent and talk fast. But look at how much information I got in in 25 minutes. Okay? So remember, check back at 1-800-Flowers.com for lots of fun ideas on, you know, living with flowers and enjoying flowers in your life every day.